Okay, hi everyone. This is Ryan Hoyme. I'm the director of social media for Bon Battelle, and today we have three special guests. We got David Otto right in the middle. Wave, David. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> Nathan Nordstrom, uh, welcome over here. Wave. David, can I, uh, Nathan, can you? Ow. Yep. Okay. And then Colette, um, she's just having problems with her video, but she's there in the blue screen there. Okay. Hello, okay. everybody. Uh, <laughs> So, um, who came up with this idea, the Underground Foundation, then? That would have to be me. Okay. And then, um, wh why did you just... It would be all my fault. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's your fault, then, right? <laughs> so, um, how long has it been in existence? How long has it been in existence now? The Underground Foundation actually... Officially started in 2009. Um, I was going to a national convention, and uh, I, I kind of wanted to get it, a bunch of my friends together and have have some fun. Just spend a night in one of the hotel rooms and, and just playing cards. Well, I started with an Uno game, um, and for some odd reason, Uno didn't have this great uh, great draw of, uh, of participants. And so, uh, me and myself and uh, and one other person. Oh, I. Um, ended up playing Uno in 2009 uh, at a convention, and it really wasn't that much fun. Uh, so in 2010, um, Adam Parrott and I were teaching ethics at uh, the Minneapolis, Minnesota uh, National Convention, and uh, and Adam said, wouldn't it be hysterical if uh, the ethics teachers uh, hosted a poker game? <laughs> and, uh, at that moment, after snickering, I kind of went, why not? Um, and so I kind of went to went through some hoops to kind of see how that might get done. Um, got a bunch of no's that that's probably not where the Massage Therapy Foundation would like to go for uh, for their um, th their name to be attached with it. So at that time, I kind of thought, you know what, I, I want to do it anyway. And so we kind of looked at different ideas, and we became the Underground Foundation. Um, so all of our all of our gatherings of uh, of funds from the poker game um, goes to massage therapy research, and so uh, 2010 we did uh, did it in Minneapolis, and then 2011 we did it here in Portland uh, for a convention and had a lot of fun, and uh, and so we're seeing an increase in in funds that are donated in, in charitable contributions and just enjoying it. So. Uh, um, we're, we're planning on continuing on in the same same rate that we're currently going at. And wh why do you think you got some flack in the beginning and stuff about it? I mean, are you still getting flack about it? or? Yeah. <laughs> well, A, it's poker. Uh, um, and so some people have a negative connotation of poker. Um, I, I happen to be a, a religious individual who, uh, who I accidentally on Facebook invited my bishop um, to uh, the poker game, and uh, he kind of sent me a message back that said, "Nathan, really?" Uh, <laughs> so kind of like, well, it's a little different because it's it's not standard poker. Um, no one wins, well, except for massage therapy research, um, because you have a buy-in, so you have to pay to play, uh, and once you pay to play, you win nothing except for bragging rights and your name on a trophy. Um, and so a lot of people are kind of taking it that this is gambling. And I, 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 I can argue that if it's gambling, you have to win something. And we don't give anything. <laughs> <laughs> we, we just kind of want people to come, have fun, uh, enjoy themselves, and give to massage therapy research. Um, so so the early fall, I came simply from the concept of, well, it's poker, and it's, um, that, yeah, poker may be evil, but who of us aren't? And do you think, do you think it's kind of leveling out about it, then? Uh, intriguingly, the concept of poker has kind of taken a back burner. Um, scheduling kind of became a, a, an issue, and, and making sure that we're doing it at appropriate uh, venues and, and locations, and making sure that state laws allow for uh, poker or, or if they don't allow for poker, what is it about uh, poker that they don't allow? For example, they uh, some states don't allow you to um, pay money 
to play card games. And so we'll have to kind of change how that is. You, you won't have a buy-in um, for that. Um, so it, that's kind of those, those issues that we're going to continue looking at as we go state by state. Um, but if, uh, if we continue to have such positive responses, we'll find ways to make sure that we're following the laws um, and not be doing anything inappropriate, um, but allowing people to have fun. If, if the actual game of poker is illegal in the state, then you know what? We may go back to Uno um, because it's a rocking game and everybody loves it. Well, maybe not, but everybody but loves yeah, it. Come on. <laughs> so, <laughs> at least I thought so. Yeah. <laughs> And, and David, why did you why did you decide to become involved in it? Well, Nathan needed a mule uh, the first time I got involved. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's a silent auction um, that he did as well in um, was it 09? Uh, no, 2010 and 11. Yeah. So um, you know, and and I really like the idea of. Benefiting um, a massage therapy research organization, um, and you know the the goal that Nathan enrolled me into achieving um, was doable. It was all planned out, and all I had to do was um, you know pull pull the cart literally of some uh, items that uh, vendors um, and sponsors donated for the silent auction. So. Um, I saw, you know, I, I helped set up um, some foods and um, during the poker game and we had a little social gathering and kind of being on the organizational aspect of that, I'm, I'm a volunteer addict. Hi, my name is David. Um, and so Nathan kind of uh, talked me into that and I've worked with Nathan before so I knew that, you know, he had um, a good solid organization there and you know talking about the underground foundation um, just kind of got me excited so I, I saw the potential in it and um, jumped on board and volunteered my services as as they can be at um, you know like gatherings like that and David with you living in Las Vegas do you know all the rules with poker and stuff then <laughs> There's several schools around here, kind of like trade schools, like massage schools, that, that will teach you all that. And I can get you the names, uh, the web addresses for those schools, if anybody's interested in learning all the rules. My answer is no. Um, but I watch ESPN sometimes. And what do you do when people cheat? Has anybody gotten uncaught cheating yet? We shoot them. <laughs> <laughs> a deep tissue massage by the uh, most aggressive person in the room. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I haven't had that challenge yet. Um, I, I, actually, we have a couple of volunteers uh, from the Washington chapter um, who have, in other career paths, been um, dealers um, and for poker. And so it, it's awesome when you say, hey, I want to put together a poker game. Someone says, I, I, I can deal for you. Because really, when you have like multiple people going in all in and there's separate funds that have to be divided by who wins, I'm, I'm lost. <laughs> 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 so that they know how to separate everything out for winnings. And so I, I, I've appreciated that every year when people say, yeah, I know, I, I want to help out. Uh, and I've never had a shortage of people who wanted to help out because it's just literally having fun. I mean, we've gotten donations. I, David talked about the uh, silent auction. Literally for the silent auction, the idea came out of me going to the uh, to the vendor hall, to the exhibit hall, and walking around and saying, hey, you've got a poker game. You want to come play? And uh, people said, well, do you guys have things to win? I said, well, no, but we could start a silent auction. They're like, oh, here, here's a book. Here, oh. hey, I got some <laughs> stones here. Hey, last year we gave away a massage table um, uh, from a uh, massage therapy warehouse. I mean, people are more than willing to give, and, and I appreciate it so much when um, I walk around and people say, hey, I, I don't want to ship this home. Do you guys want to give it away? Um, and we're more than willing to, to take stuff and make people's day. 
with a silent auction so that they can donate funds to massage therapy research. I mean, it's it's a win-win for massage therapy research. People don't have as high shipping costs going home, and I get to have fun. And Colette, so um, what, that's a yeah. win, win, win. and Colette, why did you decide to get involved? It's David's fault. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well um, I am all about bringing uh, fun into fundraising. Um, I totally support Massage Therapy Foundation. I think it's very important that people get involved, uh, um, whether it's volunteering or donating money. Um, I just, these are two amazing men and they are very inspirational to me and they have given me the opportunity to be able to work with them and I I appreciate it more than I, than you would even imagine. And so they have motivated me to want to do more and be more um, within the industry and I'm hoping that... Um, you know, we can encourage people and inspire people to to get involved. And I, I think by doing this in a in a fun way and creating activities that are fun and being able to donate at the same time is is a, a really great way to go. We've learned a few things too, haven't we, Colette? And uh, we've learned a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> So what kind of things have you learned? You know, walls don't uh, don't move too well, and you run up against them. And just kind of no. <laughs> I was scheduling aspects are very important. Go ahead, David. I was referring to um, you know raising money for uh, the Massage Therapy Foundation. You know, on behalf of all these people that are involved with the activities, has driven me to want to learn more about massage therapy research, and I'm not. Um, the expert um, when it comes to that and I've come in contact with a lot of experts and a lot of people that drive you know now um, the, uh, the field of research in massage therapy and um, people that are interested that I can facilitate their uh, learning more and you know just this whole uh, the website has really taken off we have several authors for blogs um, and we've been posting them on our Facebook page that kind of direct people to the benefits of the research. Not, not, the, fact, not the benefits of massage. We all know that, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> but it keeps changing all the time, too. That's a problem. Yeah. And massage so on that cutting yep. edge is, is really kind of why one of the other reasons that I'm involved with this is because it keeps me aware. It keeps me in the loop, as it were. So... You know, when something comes out from the National Institute of Health, um, I, I know that there's been some effect somewhere down the line for it to get up to that level of government support. And I'd like to know uh, where they got the information from and how I can justify telling my clients the same thing. You know, oh, there's a research uh, a study done, or there was a preliminary study done, or, you know, the, um, the National Institute of Health uh, published this article on X and massage therapy. So, I mean, staying on the cutting edge of research is why I do this. And I, I've done one book, book report already, you know, reading, reading the study and kind of um, interpreting, I guess, or looking for the, the key phrases in the results and the conclusions of the study and kind of just focusing on why I found it interesting and, and what I took away from it so other people can also look at the study and make that decision on their own. And David's book report is actually on the website. Um, it's uh, www.undergroundfoundation.org. Okay, and I'll post that for everybody. Right there. You. Okay. And, th and then um, why should people actually give money to you guys instead of directly to the foundation then? Because we're more fun. No. <laughs> I don't mean that in any negative way to Ruth or to anyone else because they definitely have events where there's a social gathering. But really our focus isn't just collect money. Um, it, it's to enjoy. Paulette said it perfectly. Put the fun in fundraiser. Um, 
for the last two years, and, and I'm, I don't see any reason for changing it. Um, I, I've gone to the Massage Therapy Foundation's website or to their booth at the conventions and said, hey, give me some of those envelopes, um, and they've been more than willing to. Um, one thing I have to kind of put across is that all of our fundraising goes to massage therapy research. Uh, our key donor for that, the person we donate to, is Massage Therapy Foundation. Um, but yeah, Massage Therapy Research is, is what we have titled um, what we fund for. But yeah, that's, we're using their envelopes. Um, and so for the games that we're playing, the time that we're spending, and for the donations for the silent auction, all that, all those go right into Massage Therapy Foundation envelopes. Um, and so the money is 100% going to Massage Therapy Research to them. Um, we don't have any, any uh, expenses as of right now that, um, that we're skimming off the top. Um, the food is donated. The hotel room is donated. Uh, we're all volunteers, and so we get there because of donations. We, we, we go and participate because we love to have that money go to Massage Therapy Research. So 100% of all proceeds goes directly to, um, to Massage Therapy Research. That's really rare for most um, organizations, too. I mean, a lot there's tons of expenses with everything else, usually. But, but it's, it's nice that you can give everything to them, then. Oh, yeah, and the poker chips are donated, too, that we use when we play. Oh, you do? <laughs> and the shipping of the poker chips, which is... Quite a pain in the back. Weighty <laughs> is donated. I mean, I, I do have to say that I really admire Nathan for the amount of effort that goes into facilitating not only the events, but everything else that you see about the Underground Foundation. I mean, it's um, it's it's out of the pockets, the deep pockets sometimes, right, Nathan? Um, of its organizers, and um, you know, I, it, it's, it, to me, we're kind of starting up still, right, Nathan? I mean, it, it's it's one of those situations that if you've ever started a business, you know that it costs a lot of money on the front end, but when it gets organized and, um, you know, it takes off and um, uh, there are expenses that the donors, the people that participate, understand, are that cost them to participate? They they do understand that then af after that organization that uh, oh yeah that line item is going towards you know renting a, a meeting room now for our event for example um, so that that progression I think is, is it's really good to understand that in the beginnings it's it's all about the the, the organizer's ability to have it happen without. Um, a perceived cost, and especially in a nonprofit sense. I mean, that's that's what we're all about. We do have a link on the website too um, that links directly to um, the Massage Therapy Foundation. So if um, people are excited about the Underground Foundation, but they want to give their donation directly to the Massage Therapy Foundation, we put them in contact in however many ways it takes for them to to donate directly to the found the Massage Therapy Foundation. Ryan, one of your questions was, what other things, have, what have we learned um, through, through this process? And one of the things that I've kind of pulled together uh, this year is I started the application for a nonprofit status for the IRS, and uh, I put that on the back burner. Um, but that's one of those things that, that you either got to do or you got to give up. And, uh, and so I've, I've kind of started that process, looked at the issues that go along with it, um, I, I can't say that I will never use that application, but it does have does have it has been delayed uh, for a period uh, simply because we just don't have don't have it in us right now um, to continue that direction to get the uh, IRS status. Um, but all of the money, as I said, is going into an envelope that goes to someone else. Um, so literally, um, the the expenses are, are coming out of pocket and and. I'm doing it because I want to have fun, and I've got some great friends in the massage therapy world that at these conventions, if, if they want to come hang out, we can all hang out and, and play cards, or we can sit around and, and play Uno or, or pick our nose. I don't, I don't really care, but uh, if, if we can support massage therapy research, let's do it.
And can um, anybody volunteer at these events that you're hosting? Yep. Uh, uh, Colette, we, we put in charge and, and named her the, um, the massage chair. Um, and so as the massage chair, anybody who wants to help out with the massage events or the events as general um, will call, uh, needs to call, contact Colette at undergroundfoundation.org. Um, and call it, we'll give you a job or we'll ask us what, what jobs do we have for somebody who uh, can only be at this event or can't be at this event. or So we have regular Skype meetings where we will talk and kind of see what what's going on and who's where and, and what benefits we, we've got going on. And some people don't want to get up at 6 o'clock in the morning to go get donuts, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I don't get that. Don't get it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, so last year we were in Portland, Oregon, and so we had a Voodoo Donuts run as well. And so at uh, yeah, was it six in the morning, five in the morning, something like that. Yeah. I was up at three in the morning so that I could get downtown because I live in Portland, and so I got down to the uh, got down to Voodoo Donuts and then walked to the hotel so that I could lead the walk from the hotel to Voodoo Donuts, and we had a coffin full of donuts, which. I still have the coffin, the mini coffin is really kind of fun. So, so that, that so, fundraiser what, was really good too. What, why is Voodoo Donut so popular? I mean, I've heard that name many times and stuff. It, it's a it's a local Portland thing. Uh, Portland, it, we get uh, mm -hmm. every state now has these, but or city has these. But keep Portland weird uh, bumper stickers. Uh, keep Phoenix World weird. Keep whatever uh, city you're in weird. Um, Portland kind of has the token on weirdness, um, and so Voodoo Donuts is um, it, it's a local company that um, looks at their donuts a little different than than the rest of society. They they have everything from the chocoholic donut, which has um, cocoa crispies on or cocoa puffs oh. on it. Um, <laughs> they've got uh, the they have a bacon eater, yeah, yes. the, the, so it's a, oh. a maple bar with bacon on top of it, which is to die for if you like bacon and maple. It, it's, it's outstanding. Uh, it will kill your arteries almost instantly, but <laughs> it's worth it. it. It's definitely worth it. Um, and, and I mean, they, they've got everything from little voodoo doll donuts um, that, that are pretty hysterical. Um, so yeah, so I wandered around the convention with a, a pink box of donuts uh, in, in Portland um, and people who weren't able to go to Voodoo Donuts and said, hey, can I have a donut? And I'd say, give me a donation to Massage Therapy Research, and they put it in an envelope, and I gave them a donut. So <laughs> it was just another way for people to really kind of get entrenched in the Portland culture um, for this last year and feel like they are giving to Massage Therapy Research. And, so. and why do you think um, research isn't um... – I mean, it's not really talked about much, and it's really not emphasized much, and I think in massage schools, too, it's not really stressed enough. Correct. Correct. Well, it, it, there's several arguments that I have with that. The first one is that um, massage therapy educators as a whole uh, are undereducated. Um, the majority of massage therapy educators um, may have a bachelor's degree if they have that much. Um, there's several schools that have massage therapy educators who got through massage school and two years later they're, they're teaching the class. Um, and that's problematic. Uh, the curriculum developers are, are, are looking at the basic need to get licensed instead of the most effect, effective need to create qualified, educated, and um, future thinking uh, massage therapists. So, what is changing, how the world is changing, and, and massage therapists come out of school not knowing what the future is going to look like or how to find out what has changed. Um, so that, that's that's kind of scary for me. Um, I, I've written a couple of, well, several classes, but uh, I helped write the massage therapy program at the University of Western States. And when I wrote the medical massage and the um, Let's see, this um, ortho sports and rehabilitation class. Um, that was one thing that I knew had to be in there was something about research and about case studies and about how to perform an effective case study and then submit it. Um, we had several applications that, that we got prepared to submit um, to the Massage Therapy Foundation student case study report. Um, we hit, hit deadline errors, but 
that's kind of my goal is to have students kind of say, hey, you know what, there is research and we can definitely apply and kind of work through this process as long as we have educators who are willing to really put forth the effort uh, to get that done. It's, it's an added effort, but it's worth it when you start seeing the students with the excitement uh, of improvement and growth. And is there books out there that you recommend um, that goes over massage research or? Oh, ma'am. Um, <laughs> none that come to mind right offhand. Um, really, anything, if you're going through and kind of trying to figure out where to go, uh, go to the Massage Therapy Foundation. Uh, their website is outstanding. They have uh, sections for not only student case studies, but professional case studies. Um, for professionals to, to figure out. Um, they have all the rules there, and they've got guidelines, and they've got perspectives. The Slash Therapy Foundation several years ago actually educate the educators um, portion so that they could actually teach how to teach massage therapy research. Colette, what did you have to say? You can't see me wave my hands here, but um, I, I think if people aren't sure where to quite start and educate themselves about research, um, the Massage Therapy Foundation online has a wonderful course on basics of uh, research literacy. And um, it, it's an online course, it's approved by NCB. Um, it's a great way for massage therapists and educators to go on and learn about research literacy and about adding it into your practice and into your uh, teaching. Um, I think the massage. I just, I'm sorry, David. Go ahead. I was going to say, I, I think the Massage Therapy Foundation also sponsored, I think, with Performance Health last year or the year before. Um, they did a tour of several states where um, their instructors, <clears throat> uh, performance, sorry, performance, working with performance health instructors, um, would go around and facilitate um, teaching research literacy. TRL, and um, that's another good resource, uh, that program I thought was a good resource for getting the word out there. I, I don't know of any books on teaching research literacy, but I'm pretty sure that that program would um, have a nice reference section. Many, uh, many of the conventions uh, um, across the country have a research instructor or research case, um, topic to kind of present. Um, some sort of research literacy or applying research into your practice. Uh, Diane from the Massage Therapy Foundation is going to be teaching at the AMTA National Convention. And I think she's talking about diabetes and, and the research of massage therapy with diabetes. So I mean, there's, there's a lot out there. Um, but you just kind of have to start saying, okay, the, the best source right now is going to be Massage Therapy Foundation. Uh, the IJTMB, no, IJ. Ah, crap, I knew I was going to... That's it. Yes! Yeah. <laughs> um, is, uh, is their journal, um, or their peer-reviewed uh, journal, and it's been picked up by um, PubMed. Um, so it is getting this wonderful acceptance in the society uh, of, of research. So oh, if you just go into PubMed and type in uh, PubMed, just Google search PubMed and it'll pop up. Um, and then type in massage therapy, the majority of the things that are going to pop up are from the IJTMB. Um, there are going to be others that, that you'll have interest in, um, but you can refine down what you want to know about massage research uh, using Massage Therapy Foundation's um, resources and, and many things that they've put together um, going out through the public. Yeah, and, um, and that, yeah, in, in, a, in a school that I just quit teaching um, not too long ago, they finally decided to have a class on research and case studies and stuff like that, but it took us many years to even organize that. And for a book... And it's we, 2011. Yeah. <laughs> and for a book, what, what we had to do was we had to pull information from many different books, and we had to have the, um, the publisher actually put a book together for us to make it. So it's just like, it's frustrating. <laughs> it is. It's very frustrating because it, right now, Authors are not looking at that as a viable textbook to, to fund, uh, to actually put the money into to, to writing. If anyone is, please uh, 
email us at undergroundfoundation.org and, and we'd love to review it and kind of give, give some positive feedback on, hey, here's a source. Um, because th there really hasn't been anything great out there that I've seen. Um, not, it may be that I'm blindfolded, but hey, I never know. Yeah. And, and, and then with um, the, the whole research thing, I mean, how do you think you can get it into schools more? Uh, it, it truly, it, the number one most reliant thing, and Ryan, you're going to agree with me on this, I, I, I don't doubt, is very excited teachers. I, I think that's probably why your school got it in there was because the teachers said, we have to have education, and we have to have research in here. We have to. Um, if you don't have the teachers excited about it, the school owners, the school leaders, uh, they're not going to be as excited. Um, uh, there's several ways that it could happen. I mean, everything from states starting to say, hey, you know what, you have to have uh, updated new topics that are being taught for continuing education. That'd be outstanding, um, which would mean that you'd have to do some research, uh, some of your continuing education on research literacy, on, on research, on finding out new things that are out there. Um, I doubt that's going to happen, um, but that, that would be one way to do it. Um, other ways could include the, the schools themselves actually looking at the fundability of, of uh, that as a, a separate class, um, as continuing education. If uh, the schools started looking at this as an exciting topic for continuing education, and we had teams of, of presenters that were saying, you know what, we're going to cross the country and we're going to teach this, and we're going to draw people. Excitability for research is hard. I mean, it's not, it's not uh, the newest, coolest technique that can cure people. Well, maybe it is. Um, <laughs> but it's not perceived as that. It's not perceived as this amazing, available technique where you put your finger here and, and this changes. It tells you if you actually did change something, yeah. which I find more exciting. <laughs> they... <laughs> okay, David's turn. <laughs> All right. there, there is another way. Um, to get into the schools, and Ryan, if I'm interpreting your question correctly, um, I think our profession needs to have it as part of the curriculum, as part of um, the basic curriculum that professionals learn and take with them. Um, I've been a part of many different schools of uh, schools program advisory committees, um, more affectionately known as PACs. Yep. Uh, but they're not political activist committees. They are program advisory committees. Yep. So, um, you know, and that's basically where the school invites, in most cases, alumni because it's the, the, that's on their contact list, but um, community professionals to the table. And they invite them, uh, those professionals, to look at the curriculum and say, hey, is this what is needed out there? And I've been to several where employers go to these roundtables as well, these PAC meetings. And they express, well, you know, we're looking for employees with X capability or B skill. Um, and, you know, there's not a lot of need for research uh, proficiency out there in the employment field. Um, it's all done on a volunteer basis right now, but I think when um, when it becomes more of a, a platform for uh, sales, I think that's when we're going to see more need for research in schools. Um, it's going to have to be. I think it's going to have to be a market um, issue, and we have to educate our clients. And um, you know, the uh, the AMTA has recently um, started a national uh, campaign on massage therapy awareness. And the Massage Therapy Foundation has done that already. And the ABMP does that on a regular basis. And uh, there's a, a development of a, a couple more um, um, professional uh, conventions or conferences. There's also uh, conferences developed in most recent years that span massage therapy, physical therapy, chiropractic, um, pretty much the kinesiological um, spectrum. 
And it is at these places where I think the public will learn the value of the data. And um, the recent recognition by the National Institute of Health and the logging of studies with them and, and their assessment of massage therapy as an alternate um, health care process, um, I think, is part of that public education. And as soon as the public demands it, I think there will be more of a need. And, you know, right now is the time, I think, Ryan, you're pretty involved with it right now, is getting that research literacy capability in the schools so that our mm -hmm. profession is prepared for that shift in, in paradigm and the reason that people are getting massage. And I remember some of the instructors were just scared to death in a way, but they still wanted it. Just because they wanted to um, educate themselves too, so so that was a good yeah, fear. Yeah, that's where the Massage Therapy Foundation, when they started doing teaching research literacy, um, it, it was loved and hated because people were like, "Oh, great, I, I get to learn how to do this," but oh, I have to learn how to do this. Yeah. It, it, it can be a double-edged sword, but it's a wonderful double-edged sword to have to deal with. Yep. And, and then I remember back in the 90s, too, how things have changed. I mean, well, I mean, with cancer, we weren't supposed to massage people with cancer. And then this, um, and the whole toxin debate now, I mean, that's been coming up the last few years and stuff, too. It's I've still found teachers who teach the toxin argument. Yep. So, no, it, it, it's not like um, a lot of these wise tales and, and, and historical connections and pieces are going to disappear just because of research, um, because there are going to still be people who, who present uh, certain concepts and say, you know what, obviously if you touch a person with cancer, you're going to be pushing on the cancer, so people are going to die. And you're going to say, really? And I remember when I was in school and I had that argument too, and I'm like, that is a bunch of hooey. Uh, if you're saying that our touch is healing, then how does that work to push around things that are killing people. It's not an alien in your body, it's cancer. Um, and so, yeah, being able to see how research is changing the face and can continue to change the face is the important piece. It's the thing that I, I can't even envision what is going to change next. The big next aha uh, is going to happen and we're all going to go, whoa, okay. We can accept that, but we then have to say, okay, so here's the next thing. Let's move it. And why did you guys want to get involved in research too? What's your main driving passion, would you say? Um, I, <laughs> facilitation I, for me. Oh, big words. Facilitation. Um, now, spe now spell that. <laughs> you know, he ate... No. <laughs> that, that's closer than I would have gone. I would have dropped right to the F. Yeah. Uh, so, for me, I, I wanted to get into donating to massage therapy research because I actually submitted for a massage therapy uh, a professional case study uh, to the Massage Therapy Foundation. And after I submitted it, I, I got the letter back that said, Thanks for submitting or not using this, uh, which meant it's crap to me. Um, it didn't to them. They, they were really appreciative, but they, they wanted to let me know. So I actually went up to Ruth Warner and said, Ruth, I got to know. Look at my research. Tell me what you think. And uh, she took a beautiful red pen. And well, the paper wasn't shredded, but it was really bad. <laughs> <laughs> And I realized, you know, the, the side of research of actually doing it is not my forte. Um, I, I, I'm not outstanding at the, the ability to do it. I've had to do it for school and for certain assignments, and, and um, I, I, I did one, one case study on, uh, on English ivy and how it affects the forest here in Portland. Um, but, I mean, all of that, I just kind of went, you know, that's not my thing. However, I know there are outstanding people who that is their thing. And I don't want them to have to be burdened with doing the thing and finding the funds to do the thing. Um, so if I can do something on the side and help people who 
can figure out how to apply this wonderful knowledge, you know, done. Uh, I have no problem being the back burner support and and being out of the limelight, being out of the praise, and just simply saying, hey, you know what? Let's let's get people um, out there who have the type of mind to do it, doing it. Mm-hmm. And Colette, and Colette, you? Um, I I come from if if uh, we know better, we do better. So I think being able to um, I'm sorry, I'm a, I'm at a loss for words right now. I think if we know better, we do better, and I I, I think supporting massage therapy research allows us to be able to um, not only educate our clients, but um, able to decipher for ourselves, you know, what is, you know, we kind of go back to the whole toxin debate again, you know. Um, if we know where to find the research and we know where to, where to look things up, we're better able to be educated when we speak about it, um, not just parroting with what we're being told in school uh, or what we're being told in um, oh, magazine articles versus research um, articles. Um, so, does that answer your question? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and do you think the Massage Therapy Foundation website has um, enough information on there for people to get educated more? Uh, um, yes and no. Yes, because they're constantly updating, and they've got a lot on there. Um, I'd have to say for massage therapists right now, for the amount of research that's being done, yes. Uh, it would be seriously beneficial for just about any massage therapist who's done no research at all to go to massage therapy, um, massage therapy foundation, uh, dot org and go to their website and just start looking, start searching, figure it, figure some stuff out. Um, is it going to be enough to get you to become a researcher? No, no, it, it will draw your excitement of the passion of research. Um, and so being able to say, okay, let's let's do this, let's figure out. I mean, on uh, the undergroundfoundation.org, our website, um, we have people who've written uh, little blog statements um, on research, and it just gives a different perspective of why and how and and writing and kind of an open-ended idea of what other aspects are in research. Uh, other ideas of hey, what what people should be researching. We just had people who said, you know what, here's a hundred ideas of things I think should be researched. You know what, that may spur someone to say, you know what, yeah, number 57 is interesting to me and I think it really does need to give um, give better knowledge. So if you have ideas on what research needs to happen, you know what, put it out there. But let's find a way to make sure that you have a voice. Uh, if you're not a professional researcher, that's fine. We'll find something for you to do. If it's donating or if it's coming up with ideas or if it's supporting or if it's if it's just volunteering with the, the Underground Foundation or the Massage Therapy Foundation or AMTA who's supporting the Massage Therapy Foundation or AVMP or whoever it is, NCTMB, whoever's giving that, um, just help. Uh, helping the profession uh, through volunteerism is really a way to expand uh, on research. And do you think writing grants is really hard? Uh, okay. <laughs> Have you ever tried? Have you ever tried? No, I haven't. Oh, oh yeah, no. Um, flogging is easier. <laughs> I, I guess that's being flogged is easier. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it is a brutal uh, aspect. I, I do recall several years ago the um, Sash Therapy Foundation actually hired a person to do that. And I was like, a full-time job of grant writing. Um, can you rip out my teeth one by one without you know, looking, please? 
uh, I, I have no desire to be in, in that aspect. Um, we actually were going through a little bit of, of donation concepts here that, that wasn't wasn't grant writing. We don't, didn't want to go that far, but was definitely, okay, so what is needed for um, high-value donations to put on events for um, the Underground Foundation? Um, and so, yeah, writing grants is not not my forte. Either you, but those who are, yeah. <laughs> get, get connected with the Massage Therapy Foundation. And David or Colette, have you tried writing grants at all yet? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I I have a I have a Bachelor of Arts in English Education, and um, being a technical writer was one of my. Um, objectives at some point um but yeah i mean that would be it does take quite a bit of understanding um in the technical writing field to to be effective as a grant writer there's there's other aspects to that um so, so it's not purely technical writing but you know that the communication factor is really important um in getting down in the grant exactly what is a required and b what is intended so that's it's quite a talent to have that. Yeah, and then five years ago, my dad retired from teaching, and he started writing grants for one of his friends and stuff. And he said, it's a pain, but you have to make sure you cross every T, dot every I, everything. I mean, it's a lot more critical, you know. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. I'll critical ask my friends. I love to dot T's and cross I's. Yeah. <laughs> I send my documentation to him so he can dot my T's and Cross my eyes. Yeah. <laughs> I think we all do. Yeah. <laughs> and and where do you see the future of the um, underground foundation going? Oh man, um, up. <laughs> <laughs> so not I'm underground is going to go up, bro. <laughs> yeah. um, our little logo has a, a little uh, tree or a little plant growing out of uh, out of the underground and. And if simply that that's the funds uh, developing and pushing out to give good quality funding to research, that's the ideal. Um, but I, I would love to see several different seeds, several different things going on at the same time. Right now we've got uh, the poker game, but uh, we've had people come to us and, and David's come to us and, and kind of said, hey, you know what, let's, let's do some other events. And, and I'd love to do it. We just have to make it work appropriately with the schedules we have and the events and the locations um, and part of that will be appropriately stabilizing funding um, instead of coming out of my pocket or our pocket uh, actually making it a stable uh, a stable group and so anyone who wants to fund a major event um, feel free to contact me if you have ideas for events uh, contact us as well uh, either myself or David and, uh, and we totally put, we'd love to put on more events and locations. Um, last year we uh, got contacted by the, um, uh, from Scott Dartnell, uh, with the uh, American Massage Conference uh, people, and they said, hey, let's do a poker game. And we, we couldn't get it all together and get it all figured out in the amount of time that we had. Um, but I, I'd love to see more conventions, I'd love to see uh, more activities, different activities other than just poker. I mean, my, my sinning can only go so far. Um, so <laughs> if we open it up to other options, then I think that's going to be a great, great opening for, for excitement. And it's mainly just at the AMTA National Convention right now, right? For the last two years, uh, it has been. Uh, this year, um, for 2012, it will be. Um, Right now, I'm looking at 2013 schedule, um, so I, I will be calling uh, the other people and saying, "Hey, this is where we're at. This is what we're doing. Um, do you have any interest in, in putting some stuff together for us um, and having available rooms and space and, and food and that kind of stuff?" Um, so, yeah, 2013's literally around the corner. So, yeah. so a lot of those conventions are, are definitely um, definitely opening up and giving. Uh, figuring out what times and schedules they would have available. Do you ever see I'm um, tying this in with the Facebook meet and greet ones? I mean, most conferences have these now. 
I have. I actually thought about that the other night, um, and uh, I haven't addressed the, uh, the the guys who put together the Facebook meet and greet. It, it would be the same same genre, same audience, um, and it would pull more people. Um, I think it would be the right event that we'd have to have instead of just a poker game. Um, because poker game, you've got sit down, kind of want this this group environment. Uh, some of those meet and greets get to be very packed, and you wouldn't have like room for tables even. Mm-hmm. Oh, but uh, I do, Nathan. Mm-hmm. I just wear my uh, Underground Foundation T-shirt and walk around, and uh, people ask me about it, and I talk to them about it. Yeah. So we have to figure out the uh, Find David uh, app. That uh, we could use, <laughs> and, uh, David, and uh, have his little logo, and so people have to look for him. And if you find him, then you win a Underground Foundation pin uh, for donating to massage research. Oh my God, know, This so is coming stupid. out of my brain, out of nowhere. So, yeah. um, feel. <laughs> That's awesome. I, I think we we might uh, might put something like that together for us. This convention. That's oh, really no. cool. I like that. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, it, it would be something similar to um, just the uh, just the Voodoo Donuts run, where I, I had donuts and I was wandering around and people gave money to research for a donut. Um, just kind of something fun of that nature. I I, I want to keep it simple. I'm a big fan of the Kiss method. Um, if it's not simple, then Either I'm not smart enough to do it, or uh, it shouldn't be done. Um, so I'll, I'll kind of push it off to people who should do it, or people know who know how to do it. And and do you see um, what do you see the future of the Massage Therapy Foundation? Um, more events, um, more conferences, um, and more funding. Actually. Uh, had this uh, dream the other night, and I don't put a lot of weight in my dreams, but because they're usually bizarre. Uh, but had a great one where um, the Massage Therapy Foundation um, was giving uh, a grant for research to a hundred thousand dollar grant to something in the name of the Underground Foundation, and I thought, how cool would that be? <laughs> just to kind of say, you know, we, we funded this, uh, this grant for this type of research. Um, so uh, events definitely will have to increase and, and locations will have to increase and participation will have to increase, um, to, to draw upon that. Um, but, but that, that's definitely a possibility. Uh, I've also talked to, um, Ruth at, but, oh, sorry, Ruth doesn't know anything about the underground foundation. Forgot to tell everyone she knows nothing about uh, anything we're doing. Well, she doesn't. So with that being said, that I talked to Ruth um, and asked her about um, having a fundraising committee for the Massage Therapy Foundation um, because that would be direct competition for us, and I would love to either chair that committee <laughs> for her or uh, help out and and kind of maybe take the poker out of it and still have fun events that, um, that draw research, uh, draw funds for research. Um, some sort of fundraising events that they're really not doing much of. I, I think that the part of the future is that, uh, this year, um, in Raleigh, North Carolina on October 3rd, they're having the second annual golf tournament which um, proposes TPs, 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 and uh, a donation to the foundation, um, and and it's it's a fun event that that they're holding as well, and I I see more of those events happening uh, um, on a yearly basis, and um, you know keeping it uh, it's it's like a it's like a Facebook meet and greet, sort of, I guess, you know, for people that play golf or maybe people who um, like to zip line will all gather at one um, business to do that in the future or, um, I don't know, rock climbing or, you know, something where 
it's more than just donating, but it's bringing attention to the fact that research is fun, period. So I was just checking my email because I was talking to um, the Massage Therapy Foundation, and I think September 24th is the date you have to register for the Massage Therapy Foundation's golf tournament. Um, and it, it's a great event. Uh, I've helped out with it this year and last year. Um, and it is it, it's an outstanding opportunity to get to know a lot of the uh, exhibitors, uh, get to know a lot of the uh, AMT board members, to, to get to know a lot of the movers and shakers who are related to the massage therapy world uh, that may not be directly in the massage therapy world. Um, and so it, it, the event is put on very well. They always have a beautiful golf course. They've got um, participants who are excited about golf. If you are a golfer, uh, um, definitely get, definitely go play. North um, Carolina is famous for their golf courses. Well, they are gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. So they, they, they're, they're putting that on, getting it all organized for that. Uh, you can find out on um, the Massage Therapy Foundation's website uh, their, golf, their golf tournament. Uh, yeah, but by the end of September is uh, when you have to be registered with them. So definitely go for that. And, and for myself, I'm, I'm scheduled to um, actually videotape that whole thing. So Nice. Yeah, so I'll make Does sure. Can have a glove in one hand? <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not playing, but I'm going to be shooting. So, <laughs> hey, Nathan. different kind of shooting. Yes. Nathan, what was the sign last year that you remember when you um, sponsored a hole? I think it said something effective. If if it takes you more than twenty strokes to get the ball in the hole on this or on in this hole, uh, you get a free voodoo donut. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> really, I mean. If you want to screw up your handicap, that's that's one way to do it. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, we donated to to that. We sponsored a whole, and uh, yeah, you, you want to have good sponsored funds to events that really are are for a good cause. Um, there, there's no reason not to uh, participate in the events that are going on for fun. Yep. So, um, any closing words at all? Closing words. <laughs> David, I'll let you start. Well, you know, ultimately this is all about massage therapy research. And if personally I can facilitate with the organization that is unknown as tough, um, then I am all for uh, facilitating the safety of future massage therapy clients. And I think research literacy is a great way to start. Colette, any closing? You still there, Colette? I, I'm having some audio problems. I'm sorry. Okay. No worries. I'll, I'll, I'll close by saying, you know, for the first two years, I actually was trying to keep my face away from the Underground Foundation and literally having the Underground Foundation be this great unknown. Um, however, you really can't do that. It, it, mm -hmm. When you have an absolute unknown, people run and flee. Um, and so kind of, this is going to sound absolutely wrong, and I'm sorry, coming out of the closet and um, presenting this idea that, you know what, there are people here who, um, who truly believe in funding massage therapy research and, and kind of put our money where our mouth is and say, you know what, I, I donate. I donate. Uh, Educator touches my company, and, and we donate to massage therapy research uh, annually. And along with that, I, I think there's more that we can do. And I, every year, I look at the Massage Therapy Foundation's uh, little pamphlet that they put out, or go onto their website and look at who's donating. And you know, the number of donations from one to hundred dollars, and one hundred dollars to five hundred dollars, is piddly in comparison to the massage therapists who benefit from massage therapy research. If everyone in the massage therapy world would just say, you know what, yes, research has helped me. And they go and they spend 10 bucks, one massage, 65 bucks, 
hundred bucks, two hundred bucks, putting money towards research that is going to not only better your profession, but better the quality of massage therapists coming out of school, so that the next people who are working right along beside you have a good standard knowledge of professionalism and of research and of what's going on in massage therapy, it, it's worth it to me. I, I think if I can create an event that just supports people having fun and giving money to research, um, that, that's what I want. Uh, I, I hope that people can see that mission and that drive that we just want people to have fun and give money to massage research. Yep. So the best way to get a hold of you would be um, undergroundfoundation.org then, right? Yep. Um, and David is David at undergroundfoundation.org. Colette's Colette at undergroundfoundation.org. And I am Nathan at undergroundfoundation.org. You can email any of us or you can go to the website, uh, check in on uh, any upcoming events and activities, um, as well as new blog posts. If you sign up for the blog, whenever we have someone write anything, um, We'll, we'll send that out uh, to the people who signed up for the blog, as well as um, if you do have a list of your top 10 things that massage therapists should research, uh, send that list to us. Uh, we, we would love to put that in part of the blog so that it's kind of this ongoing list and we can check things off as, uh, as research is done. Yep. Well, thank you very much, um, David, Nathan, and Colette. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. Yep. And thanks, everybody, for tuning in.